Welcome to the Brickworks podcast, an extension of the studio based here in Burnham-on-Sea. Our aim for this podcast is to have a completely open forum for conversation. This could be about art, life, mental health, or even how the world is burning down around us right now. Whether you're listening to this whilst on a run or relaxing at home, we hope you enjoy our mild-mannered rambles. Thank you. And clap. So annoying when you're editing. You have to clap. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, Mill? Very uh, good, man. How are you keeping? Yeah, very good, mate. Yourself? Yeah. Yeah, we're getting there. Awesome. Bit of a awesome. bit of a heavy session this morning. My ankles yeah, yeah, are sore. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did see on Instagram. <laughs> Bro, I can't tell you how like it sounds stupid, but I'm only 26. But every time I ride now, I'm like like it's yeah, not you've good been for years so. yeah i've been doing it like 15 odd years yeah. so i've got a so that, fair fair amount of skits. like a veteran really is <laughs> you think about it you're calling me out yeah. <laughs> i mean like i've been tattooing 17 so yeah valid i've been point. riding two years less than i've yeah. been tattooing so, yeah it's quite a while that's a valid point yeah. that is a valid point yeah. so how is the tattooing going because uh, obviously yourself runs coastline over in western yeah 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 we've got coastline we've had that uh we've had coastline open for three years now cool. um it's really really good Never expected to own my own shop at all. It was just kind of one of those things I'd had enough of working for people and yeah, stuff like that. Course. And never really felt like I had my own space. So, mm, mm. And I think after all the years of tattooing, I had an idea in my head of what I wanted my space to look like. So course, once course. it kind of happened, it was it was a great thing. Yeah. 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 So when did you move in there? I, I can't remember you to tell um, me. So where are we on? 2021. It would have been about May 2018. I think we got awesome. into the shop. Um, it was a tattoo shop for about 10 years before that, but it didn't have a good reputation at all. It was like, okay. a, you know, like a kind of bit of a fly by night old guy yeah. who yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, tattooed underage kids and things like <laughs> oh, that. So Jesus, yeah. we completely made sure the building looks very different now <laughs> and uh, yeah, made sure that no names were similar. No. Like <laughs> Choose a completely different yeah, name, yeah, like yeah, get yeah. away from the old thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. You do still get people wandering in and saying like, Where, where's the old guy who was here and we're like no he's gone no. <laughs> we never even met yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that's cool man it must have been such like an awesome process moving into your own space like um it was great it was really weird at the time because uh i'd just started getting quite a few bookings for wrestling so i was pretty much tattooing during the day in another shop mm then I would be tra- either training or working on shows on my days off and then go into the studio and I decorated and put the whole place together on my own. That's so sick. tiling, yeah. building counters, making workstations, stuff like that. Um, I was quite lucky because I grew up in a family of builders. So I was forced yeah, this, to be this. a builder from a child anyway. So <laughs> you got a bit of experience yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, but it was, it was really intense. Um, I just remember the after, I think, uh, after we opened, my other artist, Dan Pettersson, was... Uh, his partner just had their first baby and he needed a few weeks off and I remember as soon as he got back off those few weeks off I was like I'm really sorry I need a week off yeah, yeah. <laughs> and my shop had only been open a month and I was like I, I, need, a week I need, off. A, need a break <laughs> I need a break I'm going to be burnt out yeah. Shop, so, yeah. well you guys are busy as hell over there as well which is so awesome to see because yeah man touch touch wood but we're yeah. very grateful <laughs> we're super grateful man yeah like I think um we created I, me and Harry my my uh, business partner and we're married um we wanted to create a shop that wasn't your kind of archetypal tattoo shop we Mm. wanted it to feel really really like a safe space and like open to all sorts of people Mm. um we've got like a zero tolerance policy on you know homophobia racism anything offensive at all like even just even bad attitudes we we kind of fizzle out very quickly in the shop and say sorry that you know you might want to go somewhere else like we really wanted to be a really nice place because i think when i started getting tattooed and going into tattoo shops it was quite terrifying. Mm. And tattooists were kind of there was a different attitude. Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 and yeah, I just I don't want any of that at all. And, no, you know, we're really lucky because the guy who works for us, Dan, is super, super nice. Yeah, and just yeah, yeah, you yeah. know gets on with everyone. Um, has a very similar work ethic to me and Harry, so That's we've got awesome. a nice team, which is awesome. That's so it's so interesting you say that as well because I think like obviously yourself tattooed me, which yep. I'm. Yep planning yeah, to do some more yeah. and I was very honest well, <laughs> it's so cool. correct like the way we met as well it was literally just like cruising around it was it was strange wasn't it yeah, yeah. I remember you you rode past me on your BMX and I was like hitting a ledge on mine and uh 
you kind of went past and I was like, oh, that's a proper BMXer. And I've, <laughs> I've only been doing this three months. And I thought to myself, I hope he doesn't come back and embarrass me. It's really cool. And then you came back and you were like, hey, man. And then we were like chatting for half an hour. Honestly, like, oh, it was so This guy's sick. not going to embarrass me. <laughs> He's really nice. You even gave me some pointers. <laughs> I did, actually. That's <laughs> yeah, a good yeah, point, yeah. yeah. Um, no, nah, it's cool that you ride as well. But yeah. I remember like the first time we spoke about like when you said, Tommy, you were in a tattoo shop yeah. and stuff like that. And for me, I'd always wanted to get my tattoos. Like, I'd always yeah. had these ideas of these tattoos. They changed, obviously, over yeah, time. Sure. But every time I'd gone into a tattoo shop, I was freaked out by it. Because mm -hmm. for me, yeah, I do struggle quite badly with anxiety and social anxiety yeah. as well on some uh, capacity. Yeah. And yeah, some of the tattoo shops I'd gone to that had really good like recommendations and write-ups, yeah. they just felt really intimidating. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. super intimidating. Like yeah. walking in there and there's like super heavy death metal playing and there's like, like yeah, just yeah, for yeah. me, it was like, like yeah, personally. I, I've, I've completely experienced the same stuff. When I, I mean, I didn't have, but when I first started tattooing, which would have been 2005, I was 14 years off my autism diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So I was completely, uh, masking and trying my best to fit in as best I could yeah. and I just remember being terrified all the time but putting on this attempted tough guy persona yeah. Yeah. and just trying to fit in like the first ever tattoo I had would have been 1998 mm. and I remember going in there and there was all these bikers and I was absolutely terrified yeah. I never thought they'd tattoo me and when the bloke turned around and he went what do you want then and mm. I, I wasn't even speaking to him I was like yeah. oh uh, I'll have that yeah. And I pointed at the first thing I saw in the shop yeah, because yeah, I just yeah. didn't want them to be angry at me. <laughs> so I just got this. I got a tattoo I never wanted. Have you still got that tattoo? Uh, no, it's co I covered it up myself when I was apprenticing one night. Oh, I was like, seriously? Oh, yeah, I wish I hadn't. I yeah. wish I still kept it because it's yeah. quite a funny story. But um, yeah, I just remember coming out of that shop and being so happy I had a tattoo, yeah. but mildly disappointed that I didn't get what I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> you disappointed that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's totally understandable though. I think yeah, yeah. most people probably would have done that in the same yeah. situation. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that crazy. Funny. And a, a funny thing, actually, I remember, um, oh, the reason I went in there was because, oh, what boxer was it? It might, uh, I want to say Chris Eubank or someone like that. They had a photo of a boxer in the window and he had a tattoo and he was like, stood there like that with this <laughs> tiny little toe. And I was like, well, if he's been in there, must be all yeah. right. <laughs> That's what we call product placement. Yeah, man. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was probably like a stick on tattoo. Yeah, exactly. so, you know. We just yeah. took a photo off, off the internet or something yeah. and just put it up on the window. Yeah, it That's so, it's such an interesting story though, because I think like, I'm sure loads of people have got similar stories from like yeah. different tattoo shops. And it's, I was going to ask what's, because yourself obviously mm -hmm. recently, let's say recently, but mm -hmm. was diagnosed with autism. Yeah. What changed? Like, do you think, uh, what changed with, with my diagnosis? Yeah, f ah. f from from a perspective of tattooing, because you were yeah. sort of tattooing before that, weren't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you think your sort of approach changed? My approach has completely changed. My approach has completely changed. I, um, so like using like autistic terminology, um, I was masking a lot, as I said, in at the beginning of my career. So like masking is just basically putting on an act and hiding your personality and trying to hide, you know, like I've got stims and ticks like that yeah. and stuff like that. And uh, I would I would just mask it before I was diagnosed. So I, if I was working around tough guys, I would slowly start to mm. kind of emulate, uh, like kind of copy them slightly and stuff like okay. that. Um, there's a thing called, I think they call it echolalia or parroting. Mm. And that's something that's very that I've, I have very strongly. Um, you might even notice, like by the end of this podcast, I'll okay. start to have your accent. Yeah, and that's just how I am. Okay. Like if uh, I pick up things really, really quick, so that can be really awesome, and mm. it can be really yeah. not awesome as well. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. like I picked up tattooing super fast because yeah. I could watch them work and I could understand what they were doing and I learned yeah. how to set up machines and, and emulate really it. Quick. Yeah, but then I could pick up toxic personality traits very quick too okay so working around tough guys and things i would start yeah. to act like them and i would start to you know behave a bit stupid or like mm. if i go out drinking with them and stuff which alcohol for some autistic yeah, people yeah. with autism isn't the best idea um but yeah i would kind of get a little bit out of hand and mm. behave a little bit silly uh i think once i had my diagnosis the thing that changed the most was that i i became comfortable in my own skin mm. and i started to research things and i started to understand that I have these okay. traits that I need to protect myself from dangerous mm, situations mm, with. Mm. So I have in a shop with the right people. Yeah. The right 
environment as we said like things like me what you were saying about like death metal and stuff yeah, like that yeah, yeah, like yeah. i don't mind that like music every type of music has a time and a place of course uh, like if i'm if i'm in the gym doing like deadlift yeah, yeah i'll listen yeah, to yeah. some i'll listen something to 90s up. metal or yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that yeah. and i love it it's great but if i'm tattooing someone and they're quite nervous and i, I i'm would like to be quite calm while i'm tattooing it's the mm. last thing i want around me yeah but i would have done before i had my diagnosis i would have let that music play in the shop because i thought that was what tattooists yeah had. yeah you know, that was the cool thing to have in the shop um but now i'm quite happily listening to like motown or something <laughs> yeah. like that and knowing i'm just chilling and yeah yeah, the tattoo. yeah well that's the thing i noticed is like your shop's just got such a good vibe like a good yeah. energy as well yeah. and that's really interesting that obviously your approach changed quite mm -hmm. dramatically in that yeah. regard. Oh, hugely, yeah. Do you think your approach to like the art as well? Because obviously tattooing is an art form. I think, you know, speaking, I don't think out of terms, we forget it quite quickly that yeah. tattooing is an art form. Yeah, we really do. And I think that at the beginning, I, I came into it with a mindset of, because I love traditional tattooing. I love, you know, the whole whole, whole like kind of style of Americana tattooing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a whole st side of British Amer like that similar style, like Sailor Jerry and all those co so sort of styles of tattooing. I've always been into that. That's something I've always loved. But I think, again, I became obsessed with emulating that side of tattooing mm. and being an old school guy yeah. and all of those yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. And I think after my diagnosis, I've become really open to, um, I, I want my clients to be happy. Of course. And I used to just want myself to be happy. <laughs> yeah. And that did, that was meant, meant that I was still doing really nice, clean tattoos, but I was turning work away that I mm. feel was quite, uh, it was a bit ignorant of me to do that mm. because in turn, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't letting myself learn and blossom into my own person. Yeah, I yeah, was yeah. trying to pigeonhole myself into something. Interesting. Yeah. So now I do, which is, which I'm really lucky because as I said, like my partner, Harry is my yeah. business partner as well. And we run the shop together. And Harry has taught me so much about being more of an open person. Mm. Um, like Harry's non-binary. Um, Harry's very, very passionate about like the kind of LGBTQ plus sort of world and yeah. all of that stuff. And I've been educated so much more on that. Um, and all of those things have kind of opened my mindset up to being less closed minded with my art and with my own lifestyle. If you yeah, know yeah, I mean. yeah, yeah. I think having experience from other people around you is kind of yeah, vital. Completely. I think especially to grow as an artist, you yeah. know, I can totally identify with this feeling of getting stuck in making the same stuff. Because yeah, yeah. I think for me, I'm sort of going through a very similar place with like my photography where I'm yeah. making a lot of the same work again, yeah. or similar stylistic, maybe different story. Yeah. Um, and it's challenging yourself yeah. and having other people challenge you, I think is kind of vital. It, it really is. Um, and I, I, yeah, I, I think that's been a huge, huge help for me is ha creating this, this safe space to work having people that work with me who the three of us together are all kind of growing as people. And it's yeah. so nice to see like uh, Dan who works for me, he came into the shop with me. I'd, I'd met him in another shop which had a quite a toxic environment. And I left that shop because of the toxic environment. It was one of the first shops I'd actually left where I had openly said to the bosses, I don't like this environment. This isn't yeah. healthy and it's not what I want. I want to oh, grow okay. and I'm not growing here. This is this is holding me back. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I remember leaving and, and Dan kind of was was really like proud that I'd done that. Yeah. But Dan wasn't in a position to leave himself. Oh, okay. You know, financially and stuff, It you need to wasn't make sure you're possible, working. Yeah. I kind of forgot about money <laughs> and decided I would just Do jeopardize it. my yeah. future <laughs> and quit. Um, but it really helped and me and Dan kept in touch and I always said to Dan from day one, like as soon as I have my own shop, you're, you're the guy. You're the, you're the guy. I yeah. was like, you're my guy. Yeah. You know? yeah. I always, me and Dan always, I always say to Dan in some like parallel universe, man, we're married and Harry is the guy who works for us. <laughs> like, we just yeah. get on so well and we've got such a good relationship and the three of us really look out for each other and we... We, we call each other out if there's yeah. any you know even even the like mildest kind of you know if someone's being a bit shitty or if someone's mm. having a bad time we will call each other out and say and I think know, that's yeah. kind of important to have Super, that sort of yeah, like really. trust because that's a trust thing that's, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. that's a trust between you guys yeah. and, and it bond. breaks down the ego a bit as well yeah, yeah 100% 100% and it's for you that must have been really sort of um, refreshing to call out the, the boss like that obviously yeah. with yourself you know with autism I suppose there's yeah. a level of you know I don't know a huge amount about autism yeah. and I would love to be more educated on of it course, man. Um, 
I'm learning as I go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm learning as I go too. Uh, yeah, it was, it's, it, so this is the thing, like the shop I was in at the time, I was going through my diagnosis at that point and my diagnosis was quite a, quite a drawn out process. Mm. But I remember when I was leaving, one of the reasons I was very unhappy at that shop was because when I'd mentioned about it, they would say things like, oh, you know, oh, well, I think so-and-so's a bit autistic. And mm. there, was, there, there, there was a lot of things being said. And I was, I was saying, okay, this is, this is starting to feel like these people are treating me like this is a bad thing. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. Now, I don't, I don't see it as a bad thing. I no. think there's some incredible people out there in history that yeah. had we been in, had they have been in this time, yeah. would have been thought of as being autistic too. Yeah. It's just at the time... It's, so, it's, it's finding a word for it I mean quirky or whatever you want to call it but mm. there was obviously you know there were people out there that clearly were on the spectrum mm. Mm. but they were just not deemed like that no. because there wasn't a word for it yeah you know very similar with things like you know uh, with the word non-binary and a lot mm. of people having a lot of confusion over that now it's just because it's a new word yeah I understand people struggle to understand it but I think the most important thing is educating yourself on the fact that it's absolutely fine for us to discover things like mm. I saw a meme the other day where people like uh, Mount Everest was discovered like in like whatever year and they said it doesn't mean it didn't exist no the thousand no, years no, no, before no. it's always been there yeah you know and yeah yeah, yeah. I totally agree yeah. I totally agree and it must have been um, obviously that moment when you found out mm -hmm that you were autistic so yeah. the reason why I speak about this quite a lot I'm speaking about it quite a lot on the yeah. podcast is you're sort of speaking about it a lot on social media now yeah, which yeah, yeah. I have a lot of respect for you uh -huh. know and being mm -hmm. so open and honest with it you know I try and do the same with mental illness of course, and yeah. try and be yeah. open and honest with that but how did it feel to know when you had that diagnosis um, like what was that moment like because as you said it was kind of a long process it was a huge feeling of relief if I'm honest okay. I had um, so I was on and off diagnosed with depression since un under 10, since I was under 10. Christ. Um, and I've, it wasn't until I was an adult that I started to kind of realise, I don't think an under 10 year old would really be clinically depressed. No. You know, well, you haven't had enough life experience. To I mean, so, yeah. I'm not saying some have, but I of hadn't. Of course. course there are children out there that have had terrible Especially experiences. Especially yeah. as the conversation we're having before we came on the podcast yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, oh, well, yeah, with lockdowns and what yeah. that could be doing to children's yeah, yeah. mental health. Yeah, completely. But yeah, I, 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 I'd been diagnosed with a lot of mental health problems as a child. Uh, and then I actually had, a, it was a really weird situation. I was in a very, I was, I was very in a very unhappy relationship mm. without going too deeply into it, but it was a very toxic relationship. And, uh, this, my said ex-partner was very um, vocal on me having mental health problems because of certain things I couldn't cope with. Um, I have to keep things in order. Like I have yeah. to have things on shelves in the correct way. Yeah. Um, if uh, someone was to break or throw away something that belongs to me, I could have a bit of a meltdown and struggle mm. to do anything that day. Yeah. Um, and just, just, just stuff like that. Or uh, I, I, I see in black and white. Yeah. And I don't. I'm, I struggle to see grey areas. Yeah. So uh, I've had a few partners in my life who have struggled with that because they've done something quite toxic, and I've not been able to just go, oh, okay. And kind of, whereas some yeah. other people would go, oh, okay. I go, no, no, no. That's terrible. You can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and that can be quite scary for people to have someone talk like that. Um, so, the, so um, at one point, um, my ex partner and one, one of her friends had said to me that I was bipolar, and I said, I. I was so baffled. I was thinking, I'm not bipolar because I'm not having mood swings. I constantly feel like this. <laughs> I'm constantly in this state of, yeah. I, I do see everything in black and white. So I, I said, okay, I will personally spend my money to go and look into this. And mm. I went to a, because I'd been, I was sick of the NHS telling me I was depressed. So yeah. I went to a private clinic in Harley Street, spoke to a doctor, spent quite a lot of money on it. And I spent about three hours with this doctor. And at the end of the thing, and at the end of all these questions and tests he'd done with me, he said, you're autistic. Um, and I said, okay, cool. What do I do? And he said, well, you need to go to the NHS and get a proper test and you know mm. get it validated and stuff. He said, I can't do that here. He mm. said, I can tell you what I think, which is I think you're autistic. Yeah. He said, your your character traits, your personality, everything you're telling me, considering it spans back to your your childhood. Yeah. Uh, which is also another thing. Like I, I have, I can vividly remember. I have a great photographic mem memory. I can vividly remember being three years old, mm. and even earlier at times. That's um, crazy. So he said, "Go and go and get some help." And I went to the NHS, 
And first of all, they refused it. They said, because you have a history of mental health problems, mm. we won't do this. Uh, so I said, I, I argued the fact I don't have a history of mental health problems. <laughs> yeah. You have labelled me with a history of mental health problems, but because I was a baby, I don't agree with that. I yeah. think there's, there, there's not enough valid points to say that when I was at a young, young age. So, so that's, that, yeah. that was the diagnosis. So, yeah, so yeah, yeah, I didn't understand. Um, so then I spent about two years uh, being single and just trying to sort of work on myself and stuff like that. And then I met my partner, Harry, and we had some very deep talks. And Harry was actually the person that instigated going to GPs mm. and kind of putting their foot down a little bit and yeah. saying, no, you are going to send yeah. Neil You're going to look into it, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we even had a GP laugh and say, there is absolutely no way Mill is autistic. No, we wouldn't have missed this. You know, we just, they would have seen it. A doctor would have noticed it when he, when he was younger. Um, I went for the tests, uh, took about six months, uh, had really met some really nice social workers. And I think those social workers were the first ever time in my life I'd met anyone who was not judging me based on my yeah. records or, or like medical yeah, records yeah, or GP yeah, records yeah. sort of things. Um, they just completely went in with like an open mind. They gave me a, a, a reality check was, look, don't, put all your faith in this yeah. because if you're hoping that you get this diagnosis and we can't give it to Guarantee you then, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know we don't want this to affect your mental health because mm. it could be something else um, yeah and then just yeah went through loads and loads of tests and stuff like that got my diagnosis in 20 I want to say 2017 or 2016 wow. um, and then up and it hasn't been up until well, as you've seen recently that I've yeah. started actually posting stuff I've, I wouldn't I've I've been always very proud that I'm autistic. I'm very yeah. proud of who I am. And it gave me a lot of strength because of course. now I know all of those and like those quirks and things people yeah. used to wind me up about, i.e. like becoming obsessed with things. Like, you know, when you met me BMXing, I've yeah. been BMXing three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was like out every single day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was even you that said, don't go out every day. Yeah. You're going to hurt yourself. <laughs> Slow down. Um, but yeah, I, I, I became proud of that. And I mm. started to learn good coping mechanisms and yeah. safe ways to handle my obsessions and 100%. handle them things. Um, and in turn, yeah, like now I, I'm slowly just sort of, as, I, as I've been learning more, I want to start giving back. I want to start helping possibly adults who may be suffering mm. and thinking that it's different things yeah, uh, yeah, who, yeah. who could possibly find better coping mechanisms and ways of helping himself because I don't I don't agree that you need a diagnosis to know you're on the yeah. spectrum I, yeah. I completely respect anyone who's self-diagnosed I've yeah. got some friends who are self-diagnosed who I spend a lot of time talking to one of my friends Lily from uh, back in London has gone through a similar journey to me was diagnosed with depression and things like that and she really found strength in me posting this stuff and mm. we we hadn't spoken in 10 years properly you know we were instagram friends <laughs> yeah. for that 10 yeah, years yeah, yeah. and just clicking we liked stuff and occasionally hello um but now we talk again and the, we've got a great dialogue we i try and help lily with a lot of what she's going through because i see a lot of what i've been through mm. um and yeah that's kind of it, doing all of that and helping and trying to help other people has really kind of given me a lot more strength. I was going to say, do you think it's you found empowerment in that? Because I've always found, like, yeah. for myself, being very open and honest with my yeah. mental health and speaking about mm. it openly on social media yeah. has definitely empowered me to yeah. better not control it because I don't think you the control is not the correct mm -hmm. term, but mm -hmm. better understand it and develop yeah, it. Yeah, and find coping mechanisms yeah. and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I think it's definitely empowered me. I think it's not been a simple. It wasn't as simple as that at first because I don't know if you went through the same thing, but the fear of being judged yeah, oh, is absolutely. always in the back of your mind. Well, the, it's very interesting you say that. I had a conversation with another artist who's yeah. in a similar position. Mm -hmm. And I said, I said to him, the thing we've got to remember is as artists, we're feared of being judged off of what we make anyways. Yeah. Yeah. And what we make is a part of our souls, is a part of our identity, mm -hmm. the artwork that we create. Yeah. So there's a consistent fear of judgment yeah. on all yeah. levels of our personalities. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think you're very right there. Yeah. And I, I think that that does obviously bleed over into everything that you Absolutely. do, especially if you're a creative type. Um, and yeah, I definitely, that was a huge, that was a huge thing. Like the first few times I posted stuff, I almost like, had it in the back of my mind that I was 
going to have people saying you're not autistic you're that yeah. isn't it yeah, yeah. and I, I was terrified of it. and I, I actually have had it but i've had it in roundabout ways where i've been able to educate people mm. i've had other people say to me oh mill mill says he's autistic is that true and i've had mm. them friends have been able to say and you well yeah he is and they've been able to educate their friends and stuff like that so i've not had so much no not many people have been directly rude or directly okay. questioning which is yeah. nice yeah um i feel if people were directly questioning of it i'd be more than happy to talk to them mm. i've got a few friends i've noticed that i've grown up with them from back home who i feel since i've been more vocal about it and been more open about it i feel like it may have affected them in a slightly negative way in, in the in the way that they feel a little bit like certain things they can see in themselves mm. and i think that can be quite scary yeah absolutely you know uh so i i've had some friends question stuff but they've done it in a very respectful manner yeah and they've sort of said you know like I, I don't mind if a, to give like two examples if a friend was to message me and say or phone me up and say hey that this thing you've been talking about today about autism I, I have some of these things but I don't think I'm autistic mm. I'm happy to talk to them and yeah, say well yeah, the spectrum's very vast just because you have one or, or two attributes it, you don't and if you feel comfortable saying you are or you want that's up to you it's, yeah. it's you know it's how you perceive the world but um, I wouldn't be comfortable I, I remember I had somebody do some do some very toxic things and say oh sorry it's probably because i'm autistic mm. that's very offensive using it as a a, a get out of jail a, free a, yeah, card yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. that's something like i i don't have time for no and i yeah. think it's it's the same as you know people using depression and their anxiety is yeah. and i'll say it as an excuse it's very easy no. to use those couldn't agree more. as an excuse mm -hmm. and I've heard people say very similar things, especially around autism, yeah. and it is, it is quite disrespectful. Yeah, completely. Like for me, I think, you know, talking about depression, I, ha I am fully, I, I fully believe that when someone is suffering from depression, you should support them and help them through it. Totally. I don't believe that gives them any right to hurt mm. or damage other people's mental health. Yeah. And I think that it's important to be very uh what's it, uh, to be very the, the more self-aware we all are yeah the safer we all are yeah. and even the safer it makes us safer within our depression within Absolutely. autism within anything you've got to be self-aware and you've got to understand that you cannot if something like i, I always feel like if something's going to have a, a serious knock-on effect on the people you care about and you're going to use that as an excuse then it's unfair yeah i think getting help and being open with the people you love even if at mm. the time it's that you know you may have ended up in a toxic situation or a very unhealthy situation just being mm. open and saying look i'm here yeah i know you guys love me please yeah. help yeah. yeah yeah communication is so vital i yeah. think on all levels yeah. whether it's to do with mental illness autism or you know just genuinely not yeah. being in a good place and i think especially communication between the people that we care about as well you know and mm. i think that's something that i learned you know uh, with the the bouts of depression that i've had yeah. you yeah. know i've realized that self-care self-love mm -hmm. it's literally tattooed on my arm yeah. um it's vital and self-awareness yeah. as well it's yeah. so true because yeah. the thing that uh, for me i'm a big into meditation yoga that perspective yeah. i love love that side of things and that's a whole new venture for myself mm -hmm. as of late but i hate the fact that some people feel like that's the only way to find self-awareness yeah when I've spoke, spoken to people and artists and just general people, they're like, oh, but I'm not into meditation. And how do I find self-awareness? It's like, there's so many other forms of yeah, like yeah. identifying with yourself, and questioning it's not yourself. Right. Yeah. You know, med like to give a, to give a great example with uh, some, some people on the autistic spectrum, meditation is terrifying. Yeah. I mean, I, I, my version of meditation is probably not the same as yours, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah. I actually have to have quite a lot of white noise going on. Yeah. I have to have certain comforts around Inputs. me. And, yeah, 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 yeah. To actually be able to calm my mind. Mm. Some people need absolute silence, yeah. you know, cross-legged on the floor. And that's yeah. incredible too. And stepping back to what we were just saying about, you know, being self-aware and making sure you're open with people. That's not something that happens overnight. No. Either, and it's not something we're born with. No, we're, we're very not. much trained to bottle up our emotions. We're very much trained to, you know, stiff up a lip. Yeah. Move forward, well, get on with it, work. 
especially you know, men. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, I was, I was uh, invited to be a part of a film recently mm -hmm. called Momentum, and it was about mental health and men, yeah. and how men, uh, you know, men who identify with it and have these issues, how mm -hmm. they're dealing with it and better yeah. overcoming it. And in this interview, I said there's such a level of toxicity towards men being the strong, you know, we can yeah, muscle yeah, yeah. through this, and yeah. and that goes across all spectrums oh, whether you know right. mental health uh, autism i think that's what's uh, going back to uh, when we were talking about you know uh, non-binary being a new kind of word and of gender and stuff like that i think there's a lot of pigeonholing with gender yeah i think there's a lot of pigeonholing with women do one thing even nowadays there's still a lot of pigeonholing with women do certain things men do other things yeah. and i think even the most forward thinking people like me and harry try our best to be so um, so equal with everything we do Absolutely. In, in, within our house, within our life, everything. But we still catch each other. Yeah, and not course. in a bad way, but we still notice little things and go, did you notice you said that today? Or did you notice you did that today? Yeah. And it's only because we were trained as children by our parents yeah. to do X, Y, Z. And yeah. and you, you have to kind of, you have to kind of respect the process and mm. not get annoyed at yourself for these things too, because we are going to, Everyone's going to slip Everyone's going to trip up. Yeah, and yeah, everyone's going to learn lessons. And the whole point is learning lessons. Yeah. So it's not like, you know, I, I, I've, I, I'm a huge culprit for it. If I, make, if I make a mistake with something I care about, man, I beat myself up for months. Yeah. I can lose sleep over it. Yeah. Harry will wake up in the night and go, you're not still awake, are you? Come on, go to sleep. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I can't. I'm so annoyed at myself. But and so so it's quite contradictory for me to say you know trust the process but it, it, is, it is like that yeah and, uh, 100% yeah. and I think it's really um, what's the word inspiring to hear that especially mm. from uh, an individual like yourself who is autistic and has all these other things that are challenging them on a day to day basis yeah. but still being completely open mm -hmm. and trying to better improve yourself in yeah. other areas of your life is it's so important you know and it i really think is, yeah. it is super easy to slip into old habits yeah. and uh yeah. old ways of thinking whether yeah. it's something was taught to us as children or even six you know six months ago or something oh, i yeah. just punch the microphone i do that every podcast <laughs> um it's so easy to fall into that yeah. and it's catching yourself like you were just saying it's yeah. like catching yourself oh i just said that okay why did i say that like yeah you know it's yeah. that's i think just as vital as finding self-awareness you know Completely. because it's part of it yeah i don't i don't think you see because I, I i'm a strong believer in asking yourself why i mm. really do think you've got to if you have done something that's out of if you've said something or you've done something that you feel mm, that's not really my belief system that's not yeah that's out of my character it's good to sit down i do think it's good to sit down i don't think obsessing is good so i, I find that quite unhealthy when i do it but i do think you should question yeah, yourself. yeah and you should kind of like scroll back through and go yeah. okay where did this come from why, yeah, why, why yeah, am i doing yeah. this because nine times out of ten you will be able to find the reason and you can then find a bit of peace with totally it. yeah i totally agree yeah i totally agree so you guys have just got a new space for your wrestling ring. We have, yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm super excited. I've been waiting <laughs> ages. Yeah, I so remember happy. the first time we met and you told me yeah. you're a professional wrestler. I was like, yeah. oh, finally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Finally, super. I've met somebody else who's into it. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I've loved wrestling since I was a little boy. Uh, yeah, I've been around. Uh, so I've been around British wrestling since 2009. Um, I started wrestling on shows around 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, and then stopped for a couple of years and then got back to it uh, around 2017. Um, it's, I love wrestling, always have. I think it's one of the things that I find a lot of connection to my childhood with that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's kind of why I'm still so obsessed with it was, yeah. you know, I had a bit of a, I had a bit of a, um, a bit of turmoil as a kid. So I think that, that that was always the one consistent sort of yeah. thing that I loved and sort of grew up loving. So yeah, it's been it's it's awesome, man. I'm really happy that I've got a space now to kind of have as a safe space for wrestling. Absolutely. Because I really struggled training and and, and kind of working around schools a lot of the time because sometimes schools can be kind of oversaturated there could be too many students you know if you've got 30 students in a class for two hours yeah you're going to be lucky to get 10 minutes of yeah any real ring, ring time training yeah, yeah. yeah um and obviously being autistic i also 
suffered quite badly because wrestling is quite dog eat dog you mm. know and as much as it's not technically real yeah uh the back the backstage politics are and yeah. that can be quite quite scary at times i've had some really really tough experiences which have almost made me quit a few times um but i think that i've i've been very very lucky to have such a good support network the past couple of years that they haven't let me give up on myself and mm. they've kind of the people around me have reminded me why i love it and why i do it absolutely yeah, yeah and i think it goes back to what we were saying earlier mm. having that support network that yeah. trust network having people to call you out on things is yeah, yeah, so yeah. important Completely. Completely. but it's so i found that so interesting because obviously i was into wrestling as a kid got back mm -hmm. into it lately with like aew and yeah, stuff like that incredible yeah, yeah so, so good, good yeah. um but when we met and you said you're a professional wrestler as i said i was very excited but mm. the the next thing i thought and this shows how toxic as uh, sometimes your mm -hmm. mind can be i was yeah. like you're not very big yeah you're not a very big dude. Like, yeah, I think I'm yeah. a little bit taller than you and yeah, a little I'm bit like wider. Five, <laughs> like, I'm 5'8 and I am 12 and a half stone. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, wrestling? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was the catalyst for you to get in the ring like, um, and start I, training? I always wanted to do it. I'd seen, obviously, yeah, growing up, I was growing up in the 80s, so I was seeing like, 18 stone yeah. six foot three behemoths yeah, like of human beings yeah yeah, yeah yeah um and uh, i just never thought it could happen i i, I had the same thought process that you yeah. did it's like well no i'm too small yeah. for that and then i the funny thing was when i got into wrestling uh when i first started training around 2009 up until like 2012 i trained with a guy called greg burridge and a guy called gary vanderhorn they've got a school called the london school of lucha libre which i sadly think might be closed because they left their gallery recently i'm sure they'll relocate but yeah. with the lockdowns and stuff i don't I'm not, i haven't been in touch for a while so i'm not too sure what's going on um but i traded wrestling training for tattoos with mm. greg burridge <laughs> um and he said to me at the time no no, no you can wrestle mate there's there's little guys yeah. but at that point i was about nine and a half stone so Christ. i was tiny yeah, i was absolutely small. really really small um and i really struggled i really really struggled to kind of get going with that because i just at the time I was tattooing a lot. I I don't really drink much nowadays, but at that point I used to drink every weekend and yeah. I wasn't like a guy that was like, right, I'm gonna focus on my diet. I'm gonna focus yeah. on my deadlifts or anything like that. Yeah. It was, I went wrestling training yeah. twice a week and I carried on living my normal yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then I got back to it in, when yeah, so I got back to it in like 2016, 2017 and I really focused on training. Mm. I really focused on going to the gym and putting on, a couple of stone so I could yeah. you know lift people and things like that um, and just kind of got in a lot better shape um, I'm really lucky because I I mean I'm 39 years old and I can st I'm, st I'm very acrobatic for a 39 mm. year old <laughs> uh, so I can do a lot of stuff which most people of my age probably can't do anymore yeah. which is awesome and I think that's being autistic too is that I don't see myself yeah. as a 39 year no. old I no, am no, so, no. it's so weird yeah. I, don't, I don't feel 39 I still feel 21 um, <laughs> so yeah I just got really lucky man I, I well you know just had, had fun training with those guys backed away for a few years because my life I had a really bad time in sort of up from like 2012 to 2015 mm. I, I was in a really just unhappy relationship and my my dad became quite ill and passed away and stuff and me and him had a huge connection on wrestling we didn't have a okay. lot going yeah. on between each other yeah. like we didn't see eye to eye about anything uh, my dad was quite a kind of man's man yeah and i was a you know when i was a kid i was that kid who wore like eyeliner and yeah, black nail varnish yeah, yeah. and he thought that meant i was gay yeah and that was terrifying for this like middle-aged man from from spain uh so that was when he passed away it was a little bit of a knock because mm. I, I kind of that was our connection yeah, yeah so yeah. i thought him being gone was like well meh, meh. don't want to do it yeah. yeah it kind of yeah. was reminding me too much of my dad um but then i started to actually I, I, yeah again you reflect you, yeah. you grow as a person uh, i met harry Harry could see my passion for it and Harry just said you've got to, you're not gonna you're always gonna wonder what if and you're always yeah. gonna kind of feel a little bit lost with, with things if you don't give it another go so yeah I just I, I went back into it um, 
had some really tough experiences kind of like getting into it because I think at the time I wasn't when I came back a few years ago I wasn't comfortable to talk about being autistic mm. I had mentioned to the, the schools that I was training with that I was but I think maybe I needed to be more vocal about it because yeah. that wasn't it wasn't really something I was kind of wearing on my sleeve at the time yeah. I, was, I wasn't so much embarrassed I was I just didn't know how to cope yeah you were, and, you were sort of to use lack of a better term uneducated in that space yeah yeah, yeah completely and wanted to fit in and yeah. wanted to be that you know, yeah, being, being like yeah. everyone else. So then straight away the my parroting yeah. started happening again. I was I was emulating things and kinda of, I even even at that point, like even maybe two years ago, I was still picking up some toxic traits and mm. possibly kind of uh I don't know, like kinda of, kind of allowing people to treat me in certain ways that I probably wouldn't have in any other part, aspect of my life. Yeah. Um and then it wasn't until last lock that well when lockdown started last year that I spoke to my, like my tag team partner, who's like one of my closest friends in the world, and uh, we we said like let's let's get a ring, man. Let's mm -hmm. let's do our own thing yeah. because this this isn't this like we we know a lot of people that are like me or a lot of people that yeah, feel yeah, the yeah. same way, and uh, we just like we're not we're not going to open a school, but we are going to have a safe space yeah. for people who feel that way to come and train or you know, which is so important. Yeah, so completely, important completely. and. You know, obviously, I don't know the wrestling business. I'm the audience member yeah. per se, but I could imagine that it is a very strange environment behind those curtains, and yeah, yeah. can be toxic in some regards. Grown men, yeah, covered in baby oil. <laughs> yeah. Go to the gym every day. Some are on steroids. Yeah. Some have, you know, some have been on the road for 15 years. Yeah. And some guys have been there two weeks. Yeah. You know, and there's a lot of egos and a lot of personalities. Absolutely. You know, I've met some. Re I've met some hilarious people i've met some terrifying people you know it's <laughs> it's it, it kind of really it, there's no well it's a vast spectrum as well yeah <laughs> so, yeah yeah do you think you're so obviously in in wrestling character development mm -hmm. or yeah. having your persona your character yeah. is vital to like you as a wrestler i'm guessing it helps mm -hmm. sort of push you forward in your yeah. story that you're telling as yourself yeah. do you think that your autism has helped develop that character like or at least sort of help dig deeper into it in yes, some ways 100 percent. when i went the so if you looked from i would say we had a few i can't went up because i took a i took about six months out in 20 i just well like the year before lockdown so 2019 yeah, yeah. 2019 took like six months out and came back um because I was having, I, I genuinely was like, my mental health was suffering. I was burnt out. I'd worked a couple of shows for a promotion in Cardiff and the the politics backstage were just mm -hmm. really vile, really, mm -hmm. really vile. And uh, it really made me ill. So I stepped away for a bit. And th at that point was kind of the point where my partner Harry and me discussed things. And I said, I'm not really being myself. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to kind of fit into what they want me to fit into. Yeah. Um, and then when when we came back we were very very lucky to find a promotion which is called southwest wrestling cool. um and the promoter there uh, didn't really know us but i know a, a friend of ours had kind of given us an in yeah um, his name's uh, he calls himself chris bronson in wrestling but he was such a nice guy and he had his first match with me and my tag team partner awesome, when he was training man. so and he's always had our back and yeah. one of the most talented in ring performers who's completely underrated and no yeah. one no everyone should know who he is and they don't yet and he's yeah. absolutely amazing but he went to the promoter and said look there's these two guys they're a bit down on their luck but they're good guys and mm. they can work and they are you know like my tag team partner's silent his whole yeah. gimmick is he's mute yeah. but i can talk so <laughs> he was like this guy can talk you know his pro their promo stuff is really fun good. yeah uh, you know definitely give him a shot and that promotion took us under their wing and oh, have been man, super cool awesome. ever since uh that's yeah. so awesome I love the promos that you guys do yeah. I, was, I was watching yeah, yeah. some of them last night I was yeah. like fuck these are amazing yeah, <laughs> like, like, I, I want to do something different I I feel like there's when like you know you were saying about you love AEW yeah I love that, that I mean I'm 39 so I doubt I'm going there anytime <laughs> soon well but, but you never know yeah. but I doubt I doubt it very highly but um <laughs> I love what they do because they're doing that. They're having mm. fun. And you can see when you watch the promos, when you watch the show, you can see the guys working on the shows are having fun. You don't feel that when you watch WWE anymore. Mm. It looks really... People don't look happy there. No. It looks really... And it's dull. It's really dull. And I think that 
there's the problem is with British wrestling is a lot of uh, a lot of us have grown up to replicate what's going on in WWE. Of course. So there's a lot of guys. What's the who, biggest platform? Yeah, completely. And there's a lot of guys who have kind of not got confidence in themselves to be a real character and yeah. do crazy promos and kind of step out of their comfort zone. Mm. Like, I, I, that's the the main thing I wanted to do was to be out there and, mm. and not just be these two guys that are like we're tough guys yeah we're yeah, gonna yeah. kick your ass on saturday yeah yeah, yeah. see you there like that yeah. i didn't want to do that i no. want people to laugh at me i do want people to laugh at it i want people to have fun with it you know yeah 100 percent. and i suppose it's a way of you stepping outside of you know mill and stepping yeah. into this character yeah. and being able to you know speak in a different manner and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. pronounce and just be different from the mill yeah. that i'm sat here with which yeah, i find super interesting because I know I've, I refer everything back to the art world, but in the art world, you know, you look at street artists who yeah. are under different names. They, I've met a few that, you know, are anonymous names and stuff. Yeah. And when you meet them in person, they're completely different to the artwork that, the, the, that they make. And I mean that in the context of like, you build up this idea of yeah. looking at their art, what they would be like as a person, yeah. just natural human behavior. Completely. You meet those people and you're like, fuck they're completely different man yeah, like, yeah. and uh, it's so interesting because when I watch you as your character and then sit down and talk with you whether it's getting tattoos or just yeah. hanging out on a podcast I'm nothing like no that, you're so different I'm, I'm like not. it must be amazing having that like being yeah. ability just to be like I'm going to step outside of this for a bit and yeah, be yeah, this yeah. character that, that guy's a culmination of 17 years of tattooing <laughs> Like, you know, having a, having a crazy Spanish Cockney dad. Yeah. There's like so much to that, man. Yeah, and I, I enjoy doing it. It's fun. I think uh, it's be doing that character that I did. Because I remember when I first came into wrestling, I really did want to be a tough guy. Yeah. And yeah. I, I remember I had like these big like Wolverine mutton chops. <laughs> and I was like, every photo was like tense in. Yeah. And, like, and now I am an absolute nutcase idiot <laughs> who just talks <laughs> talk shit and just has fun and it's so much more it's so much more entertaining and as soon as I did that mm. everything changed and my confidence started to soar yeah um, and I just realised that I I was as much as other people were trying to pigeonhole me and say oh you need to do this and you need to do that mm. I was letting them tell me that yeah it was it's it's on me yeah it, it's, it was on me to take that in and it was it was also me thinking oh, if I want to do this or that, I, I, if I want to I get to somewhere, to I've people. got to do this. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. I started to realise, I'm actually really happy. I have yeah. a nice life. I, I, I can just do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fine. And yeah. Because I'm not, you know, of course, like, if, if someone phoned me up tomorrow, and because me and my tag team partner always laugh and say, like, the only way we'd ever get on something like AEW would be, we'd be in like a three-minute squash match. Yeah. Like two massive dudes would just come out and muller us. Yeah. But do you know what? I'd be happy enough. I'd take that any day of the week. Hell like yeah, this, bro. And, <laughs> but like three years ago, if you'd have asked me that, yeah. I'd be like, no, nah. man, I want to get booked for this promotion and I want to have an angle with this guy. Yeah. And I would have thought like I was a lot, I, I don't care, man. I'd just, yeah. I'd, I'd do anything. Now. just having that fun like yeah, just yeah. enjoying the process dude it's if so they told me I had to come out and sweep the ring and some dude was going to come out and give me a power bomb I'd take it I'd <laughs> love it <laughs> so change your gimmick you're going to wear a janitor uniform yeah, like, yeah man I'm there fuck I'm it there. I'm in <laughs> like yeah, I'm yeah 100% in, yeah. it's so interesting to say that because I think I'm for me like with BMX Mm -hmm. I'm in that space now. Yeah. I used to take it so serious as yeah, a kid yeah. like yeah. I was like I want to go pro all mm -hmm. of this shit mm -hmm. and when I came back to it six months ago like after my back surgery I was like yeah. I just want to have fun, man. I just want to pedal around. And like, I've seen so much growth in that I was going to say, I bet you're doing stuff oh, you, yeah. never, you couldn't do yeah, in literally, the past because like, you're just chilled. Yeah, I'm just like, oh, it. I want to try this. I want to give it yeah. a go. So yeah. I give it a go, you know? And it's so much more relaxing, the approach. Yeah. And it's so much more rewarding as well because yeah. I'm not panicking about trying to do the next trick or whatever it might mm -hmm. be. And it's the same in the art in the arts as well I'm not although I can't figure out what I want to make right now mm -hmm. I'm not panicking about it yeah. because I know something will re-inspire me yeah sometimes sometimes you have to chill just let it out yeah just let <laughs> yeah. it let it yeah. be let it be you yeah. know sort of thing which yeah, is so completely. so vital so your tag team partnership is called CY no CYRK CYRK yeah awesome um, so we were training in Cardiff and one of the uh, guys who ran the promotion said to us he didn't like my tag team partner was doing like a kind of just a kind of nice blonde guy superhero kind yeah. of guy uh he was a good guy and i was playing i was just being a, a cool tattooed guy yeah. with wrist tape <laughs> a bit like cm punk kind of thing yeah and um 
one of the promoters said, oh, we think you should be like an end of a pier bare knuckle fighter. And I was like, oh, okay. I get yeah, okay, and I was like, "All right, well, they want to book me, so okay." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they put out, um, they put out an email, they put out a message in the in a Facebook group, and uh, the trainers put out a message, and they were like, "Right, if anyone's kind of thinking they might want to kind of move forward a bit quicker, we don't have enough tag teams, mm. so you know, there's something to think about there, guys." Yeah. I just put your <laughs> uh, So they're like, you know, there's something for you guys to think about too. So I, me and Alex were talking and. Alex was a little bit kind of disheartened too because they felt that his gimmick was very family friendly, mm. which it was. It was, you know, and that's kind of, that's awesome. You know, he's got a little boy who yeah. really looks up to him. His dad's become a wrestler. That's that so was cool. so cool. Um, but we spent a lot of two hour drives back from Cardiff yeah. feeling very, very deflated, thinking, mm. oh man, like we can't get it. And so then I said, look, man, this ended a peer thing, this bloke saying, I said, won't we do like a, we'd do something with that. Let's try and work something out together. And we were like, well, and then Alex sort of said, well, what about like a circus sort of type thing? You know, mm. end of the pier fighter, like, you know, carnies, yeah, kind of, yeah. two carnival kind of guys. So it's like, all right, cool. So we started looking into that and then he was like, well, you know, if you're going to be like the kind of, the circus kind of tough guy, yeah. prize fighter guy, he was like, why don't I be like the kind of tumbler, you know, like <laughs> yeah. the good guy who does the trapeze and all of that. So he said, okay, well, let's, let's kind of work on that. So we started creating this thing and then when I'm really comfortable with people, mm. it gets a bit out of hand. Okay. <laughs> so when when it came to actually making promos, mm. this whole idea went out of the window <laughs> and all of a sudden it was just a this this mad dude in blonde dude in face paint yeah. and me finding any old man suits I could find in the cupboard <laughs> and putting loads of grease in my hair and just shouting in cameras and saying to people I was going to mess them up. And we, I remember we put out like a first couple of promo videos and one of them got about like three or 4,000 views in like a few days. And we're like, holy hell, man. Yeah. We can't even get a book in. <laughs> and now we're getting all these views. So we're like, hey, cool, man, let's do this. Uh, so we kind of, we really pushed it. We really pushed the boat out. Problem is in wrestling, you got two sides. We had a, we had a couple of people that were like, "This is awesome, we mm. love it." Then we had a couple of guys that were like, "That's not wrestling. Mm. This isn't wrestling. This is this is stupid. Yeah. These guys are just a pair of idiots." I was like, "It's not actually us." Yeah. There's no, I mean, you guys do this as well. You do know yeah, that we're playing yeah, characters, playing right? Car yeah. Like, I don't go home in this ring. <laughs> <laughs> but, I kind um, of imagined you might though just go home in this like greasy suit just like it, it, it carry us, it carry us <laughs> nicely uh but yeah that we had like we kind of have a very mixed reaction and i remember there was one trainer who was so so on us he was like man this is awesome and he, he, he put us in this message group with a couple of quite famous wrestlers they're like Sick. there's a guy called mark andrews and a guy called flash morgan webster yeah and they buried us man they oh, for buried real. us they were like yeah it's all right yeah, but well, you're using this camcorder thing and you're copying one of my friends from up north. And I was like, your friend didn't invent camcorders. <laughs> like, we just did one promo on a camcorder. Sorry, <laughs> man, we'll change it to a normal one next time. But there was no constructive criticism. It was like, yeah, just be careful. Don't rip off our mates. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then obviously, I like Mark Andrews said, yeah, I like it, but, you know, because uh, Harry was our manager. And uh, he was like, I like it, but, you know, I don't like English people doing American accents. And I was like, you're in a punk band and you sing with an American mm. accent this feels like we're just being victimized. Yeah. So we said, no, we'll carry on, man. Let's push this. Don't worry what these guys say. The, the other booker likes us, man. Yeah. We're good. He's booked us. And we worked on a show for the promotion in Cardiff. And uh, the, the, the guys, again, kind of buried us. Mm. They didn't like us at all. But we got the biggest pop of the night from the crowd. <laughs> and we had the most people sitting asking for autographs after the show. That's and everyone sick. was going crazy. But after that show, we, we quit the school because yeah. we said this ain't on man like we need support yeah. if we're like we're paying money to train at your school yeah. if it's not constructive criticism that's not for us and mm. you know we're all good thank you very much we said our goodbyes and uh, that was it and yeah I think the oh man like since I've found myself I'll be dead honest with you I feel a lot better but I'm nowhere near where I want to be yeah of course this gimmick has got so much more to come and yeah, I've got so much more I want to do with it and especially after a year in lockdown yeah you know I've, I've I've there's a lot more that I'd like to do that I've never been confident enough to do okay. and I think now after having this year to reflect mm. I'm starting to feel like time's running out so mm. it's time to start pushing pushing yeah pushing yeah. that now I'm not that doesn't mean pushing it to get booked for big promotions no no no, no. but I want to do something different 
yeah and yeah and, and my tag partner alex is very much behind me on that and he's always like yeah man let's 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 do this that's yeah. so yeah. sick that's so awesome man i think we're running up on an hour do cool, you man. ever feel like you're burnt out from just talking no, I, I talk forever mate. <laughs> i was I'm gonna say our conversations are pretty sick though yeah, yeah. i do enjoy them yeah. that's why i just come to you to get tired these yeah. days yeah. <laughs> that sounds like cool man so what's the plan with like with your wrestling now that everything's starting to open mm -hmm. a bit more um, you've got yeah. the new ring is there a plan to start getting on some shows well, yeah so we've got our first shows back are july 31st and august 21st for southwest wrestling so, so we're definitely doing monthly for those guys which is which is cool and yeah again check out southwest wrestling they're, they're awesome. really good guys and they've had our back since day one um and then there's another promotion in Leeds called Rise, who I worked for a couple of times in singles matches. And I'm really hoping those guys are gonna take me back because I've been pitching mm. my new ideas. Okay. Um, they're, they're in, I don't know whether or not they'll take Cirque as a tag team or if they yep. want me to do a singles thing for them, but I'm just pitching ideas and hoping that they're <laughs> just gonna, throwing yeah, stuff. They're, yeah, I'm just hoping they're gonna have me back. Um, and I, I'd like to think they will. They're good guys and they're a really, they're like more of an adults only promotion. Yeah. They're very alternative and they, uh, they, they, they get it. They get where I'm coming from because yeah. there are a lot. Of, there's a lot of guys in Rice who are really underutilized in the UK. They're really okay. good workers, and uh, yet again, I just don't feel they're in the right clicks, so they're not getting yeah. the right pushes they 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 sh they deserve. Mm. Um, and then long term, I, I I want my own promotion. Mm -hmm. that's, that's that's the. Goal. I know we spoke about that briefly, yeah, didn't we? Yeah. What would that sort of entail? Like, because I have no idea what how to set up a promotion, something like that. Because I know we had a conversation about trying to find a venue mm. in like somewhere mm. in Western. Yeah, like, so yeah, I mean, I'm learning myself because yeah. it's not something, wrestling promoting is not something I ever wanted to do because I've seen how stressful it is. <laughs> yeah. But I think that if I go into it with the mindset I have for other things that I can yeah. make it different to how other promoters were promoting their shows and stuff. Um, I really, I love, as I say, I love the guys in Leeds who are doing Rise and I think that they've got a really cool thing going on what I would really like to create and I speak to my partner Harry and my tag partner Alex about it a lot is a, it is more of a really kind of safe space promotion mm. which is also a little bit out there if mm. you know what I mean I'd mm. like to I'd like to have like you know me and you have spoken about when we get started you do yeah. photography for us and stuff yeah, like yeah. that um, I want it to be a community thing um, yeah. like I notice in wrestling like there's some awesome photographers but it's very much you've got to you've yeah. got to get in and then you're this promotions photography or that yeah, yeah. so I'd like to bring people in that are on the outskirts that love it yeah. that can be passionate about it and nice. you know kind of yeah, bring yeah, a new yeah. bring a new style to things that's a really um, interesting because I, I feel like you know how we were saying about how when you kind of get pigeonholed with a style yeah. and you force yourself into the pigeonhole Absolutely. I think wrestling photography can sometimes go down do those that, roads right. where you know you have to take a photo because the promotion yeah. wants you to do it that yeah. way yeah, yeah, yeah. whereas I want to bring someone like yourself in and just go do, do it. you? Yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it. And I think that freedom is all that us as artists, yeah. uh, being a wrestler and a tattoo mm -hmm. artist, it, wrestling is an art form as yeah. well. Yeah. It's all we ask for is having yeah. that freedom, that space to create and be who we are. Uh -huh. And that sounds like such an interesting yeah. way of approaching, especially a wrestling promotion. Yeah, I'd, I'd like it to just, I mean, I'd like, I think I would like it to be more of a adult promotion. Of course. Because I think that the type of ideas I have for it wouldn't mm. be great for kids to go to the shows. Yeah. I would like to have performance art there. I'd like to have burlesque. Mm. I'd like to have uh, drag. I'd like to have, um, you know, fire, fire dances, things like that. Of course. Um, I'd like to have kind of just a bit more of a, a bit more of a kind of place where you, you feel like even if you're not a huge wrestling fan, you could still, you could still enjoy the night. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? yeah, 100%. And, and then maybe it might make you like wrestling a little yeah, bit because yeah. you're going for another reason. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just, you know, stuff like, uh, I've, I, I, I'd love to see some like I'd love to have some uh, drag queens for like you know the the doing the cards for yeah. matches and stuff like that and just having stuff like that that I enjoy and that mm. I love like I've I, I was super lucky I, I grew up tattooing in Soho in central London so I was I, I was completely um, just saturated in all different types of communities and all different yeah. types of things and I've always been so in love with creative 
creative types in any way mm. <laughs> so just knowing that i could maybe create something like that here yeah. where once a month so everyone can meet up and yeah. have a lot of fun and after the you know after the show's over maybe like hang out and have a drink and a dance and you know that'd be stuff so like that. yeah. sick man yeah. and having that background as well i think is so important and mm. it, it shows through in you as a creative you as a person as yeah. well having that interest in multicultural and yeah. different approaches and everything yeah. it's yeah. so cool it sounds yeah. like such a sick idea man i know right i'm just hoping it won't, I'm hoping it won't be too long until we can get it going. But, you, you know, it is, it, I, I'm, I'm a strong believer as well in when it's the right time. It's the, it's the right time. Absolutely. So to everyone who's listening or uh, watching this podcast, where can they find your stuff, Mill? Um, I know where I can find you. So uh, you can find me on Instagram. It's at Mill Martinez Jr. Uh, you can find my shop, which is at Coastline Tattoo WSM. Um, you, if you want to watch me wrestle, uh, you can find me on Southwest Wrestling. I can't quite remember their Instagram <laughs> right now, but if you Instagram SWW Wrestling or Southwest Wrestling, I'm sure you'll come find up. Them. Um, and yeah, just yeah, if, if not, just man. yeah, if anyone ever wants to talk to me, man, just drop me a message. I love yeah, speaking to everyone. Yeah, man, that's so sick. Yeah. That's so sick. But yeah, guys, make sure you check out Mill's stuff, mm. the tattoo shop. I'm probably going to go there again yeah. uh, very, very soon. We'll be hanging out soon. What are you doing sure. tomorrow? <laughs> 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 um, and yeah, make sure you check out Mill's wrestling and everything. Um, truly incredible stuff to watch. But uh, as I say at the end of every podcast, it's a crazy world out there, guys. Make sure you stay safe, stay humble, take a few bumps when you need to, yeah. and uh, keep smiling. Peace, guys. <laughs>